to talk about and highlight this story courtesy of complex regarding these um sneaker designers or customizers called Kokai kai and obviously omi and the hellcat who most of you guys know from going down and having that kind of trouble with the police and fbi due to his um scam or this service he was running where he was allowing people to basically stream tv channels or shows off of this little usb card thing that he had i forgot the whole story behind it but you know omi and the and this guy but it looks like nike are finally coming down on these dudes who were selling these shoes and making a real hefty hefty amount of money i think during the start of the pandemic i felt like i saw these shoes come out of nowhere i feel like before it maybe did exist but they definitely kind of popped and went kind of in you know went nuclear during the pandemic maybe because people legitimately were hustling to make sure they can keep a roof over their head but regardless these sort of shoes were essentially where you take a jordan silhouette and you just replace the swoosh with your own logo in the case of the cool kai his one was like a funder um omni obviously did a funder too because they had the beef and they fell out and to prove a point he just did the same shoe as him then you've also got i was thinking who's the other person who had something um then you got obviously warren lotus he had his own thing you got the flipping rapper i forgot his name um nah he's got one as well then obviously you've got um that guy a dude who's different but you know basically in air force one with his little g symbol but that was a thing that everyone was doing for a very very long time as you can see here from the lawsuit you've got a genuine air force one here from ed nike um air jordan then you've got the cool kai ones and then you've got an omi no no and i like how they say knockoffs uh kai knockoffs omi knockoffs so there's all their listed and this is not article courtesy of complex it says nike has filed a manufacturing agreement so agreement and man i guess fractured and trademark infringement lawsuit against two popular sneaker designers and the manufacturer of their footwear the swoosh filed yesterday in the southern district of south new york and lawsuit that spans six different complaints nike says defendants nick one uh, of what a name nick one arvinger and david weeks of by kai um aka cool kai and bill omar christ Krilla of reloaded merch on the hellcat have been promoting copying and selling nike designs namely the air jordan and dunk as their own look that is really egregious i'm looking at it right there's a picture here of these dunk lows sbs and they're essentially the same colorway just with the flipping swoosh changed that is so egregious it continues nike's lawyer said they notified kyle of the alleged infringement on august of 6 2021 and attempted to reach a resolution with the company to no avail they also contacted omni in october to the 5th 2020 Oh, 2021, I'm assuming too, not 2002. Jesus, we're similar warning. The document sent to Omni, which was viewed by Complex, stated that the brand had one week to contact Nike's lawyers to discuss the matter or that it would be a federal lawsuit. Despite these advanced warnings, yesterday's lawsuit alleges that Kai and Omni continue to profit off the infringement designs. Oh, they're going to have to settle out of court or they're going to have to pay a big fine regardless. But it's just so stupid. I do not understand this. You got that kind of warning. And then you still go ahead and do it anyway. Crazy. Um, in the lawsuit, Nike also takes aim at the China-based manufacturer, Xiaim Wandering Planet Import and Export. Wandering Planet for short. Yo, this is crazy. They've actually exposed the manufacturers as well. You gotta assume a lot of these guys keep secret, right? They try to make it seem like it's some underground, undercover thing when I'm assuming you can probably find all these manufacturers on Alibaba if you check close enough or even AliExpress. But now you actually know what the names of these people are because they're gonna be happy to do business with you anyway, regardless. In the filing stating that the Wandering Planet played a pivotal role in the infringement by providing resources to produce shoes for Kai and Omi. By supplying Kai and Omi with knockoff sneakers using Nike's registered Night Edge on One and Donkey Trade Dress, Wandering Planet and it knowingly participated in a scheme to intentionally create confusion in the marketplace and capitalize on it several side-by-side -side comparisons between nike products and kai and omi designs are littered throughout the documents so this is nike's wording they actually wrote this in the documents they actually wrote omi knockoff <laughs> that's so offensive Gee, they took it personally, legitimately. You'd imagine these are just faceless corporate types, but they're legitimately taking this really, really personally, which explains a lot. If you ever worked, you know, with people from Nike or been there to the offices or had interviews, you know how seriously they take the brand for real. Like you turn up to a Nike interview wearing Vans and you're gonna have an issue. Not even Adidas, it's just like Vans, like and you don't have any money in your debt because you need a job to get the money to buy the shoes or whatever it may be, or because you just worn Vans that day because you know they're the comfortable shoes that you wanted to wear for an interview, you'll definitely feel it for sure. 
and you'd feel it from a receptionist. Someone's not even interviewing you. would be like, oh my God, how come you're in vans or some cleaner? You're like, why do these people care? And then you get the interview, you realize, oh, they were trying to warn me. <laughs> this is a big deal. So it continues. Several side by side comparisons between Nike products and Kai and Omi designs are littered throughout the documents uh, as an example for the social media posts from confused consumers. Cool Kai took the whole Jordan 1 design, one reads comment, and everyone says, These are Jordans? <laughs> yeah i'd imagine right i didn't actually think about that about the amount of easily duped kids out there who are just kind of browsing social media they get all their news from there they don't actually read hypebeast or go on nice kicks or sneaky freak or whatnot they're just getting all their information directly fed through instagram then you see these abominations on the side which are jordan one low knockoffs with the thunderbolt on the side that kind of looks a little bit revenge stormish and they've got a very shiny plastic look to them which is funny because nowadays what's made it hilarious all these knockoffs especially when you think about replica shoes is that the quality of the actual shoes you get from nike and air jordan or jordan brand have gone down considerably to the point now where knockoffs are easier to copy because the the original source material is so crap in some cases i've seen some instances when i'm reading rep sneakers where some people are saying that the legit pair actually is less is not as good quality as the rep pair because there's so many clear mistakes or quality control errors that the factories can't even repeat so they're trying to make the best product whereas nike is cutting corners and just pushing out wherever they can push out and not scrapping it i guess because they don't want to waste any more money or whatnot but i would just find it hilarious how some kid who just wants to look like it's at rocky or travis or travis scott for instance it's just browsing social media, finds finds these and thinks they're legit, or thinks there's some sort of collaboration or something from with Fragment, buys them and then realizes they're fucking knockoffs. It's absolutely hilarious. From two guys that never heard of Cool Kai and fucking Omi and the Hellcat, you know. Imagine having a brand called Cool Kai and you're wearing those on your feet. Next level. Along with trademark infringement, Nike says that Kai and Omi's designs are also grounds for counts of false des- designation of origin and unfair competition. And trademark dilution. The Swiss lawyers argue that the alleged knockoff sneakers are likely to confuse consumers about the origin of the products and Nike's connection to them, especially the secondary market where the highlights example the resellers use a variation of Edge on one name to advertise cool products. Okay, cool. So people on eBay and stuff are buying limited edition cool Kai shoes, which is fucking insane. And then they're reselling them because you know the sneaker industry is fucking insane, but they're using the buzzwords or the tags in their listing, they're using Edge on one. So that if you are looking for an Air Jordan 1 backboard, you might stumble on the same colorway made by Cool Kai. Makes sense. Kai and Omi had a public disagreement of their own last year. According to Omi, the two competing designers had a falling out over their trade manufacturer. Sorry, I told him, listen, if you don't call back the manufacturer, I'm going to release your shoe for cheaper. Omi said, imagine that being your friend that they do that. Whenever your friends do something like this as the first retort at a slight, usually you should realize that that person never been your friend if that's the first if your friend the first thing they say is like fuck your dead sister or something they're probably not your friend that's the first thing they say during a disagreement that means they were holding that in for that long imagine you fall out with somebody as a business partner of yours and a friend and the first thing they do is like, okay cool to get you back i'm going to sell your shoe cheaper or the shoe that we both designed cheaper god almighty so what i did was took the shoe i took the brand and i ran with it it worked out for both of us honestly because we're both kind of popping off of me that's that's a that's as la and as flipping new gen of relationship i've ever seen in my entire life i fucked him over but it's good because he got money it's like what does money anyway let's continue um among his requests nike is asking that the court block any further production of the advertisement of the infringing sneakers it also asks the defendants provide any and all product packaging and promotional materials to be sent to nike for destruction <laughs> they want to be to be sent to them so they can lie on fire not even go get it lit on fire somewhere else no give it to us and we'll set that sh- that trash on fire it's also exceeding compensation for the damages and related expenses although an exact monetary value has not been determined whoa um carasquilo posted a message on instagram in response to news saying that he was under the impression that omi brand was in the clear and even as his lawyer is scratching his head <laughs> oh, these guys are so egregious how can you be scratching your head to this how can you see this and scratch your head really come on Stash, you're scratching your head when you see that for real oh my god man sneaker customizers are the most flagrant eh? they've got an ego that's really outsized considering that all they do is paint on shoes or add materials to shoes that already exist or in this case they make exact copies of shoes that already exist with just different logos on it it's nuts 
In conversation with Complex, Caraskillo says he believes that the Edge of the One inspired model is different enough to, for the real thing, but the Dunk inspired shoe will be an issue, admitting not enough changes were made to the original. Everyone's doing it, so I just thought <laughs> it ain't nothing. Of course, you thought that, which is stupid on my part. Caraskillo says the decision not to significantly alter the Dunk inspired release. Key Kai designer. Um, co-founder also publicly posted a lawsuit saying the brand later posted the video parodying Jordan Brand's band air for 95 to respond to the lawsuit Nike did not respond to a request for comment so my opinion on this thing I've always for the longest time hated sneaker customizers because I felt like they were always incredibly lazy I feel like most customizers especially the ones that came off of the back of the hype around like the just on has because i feel like the just on era was the time when sneaker customization got a bit crazy and people were going out all over the place i think that's maybe around the time that john geiger started doing his stuff also because i remember he had that shoe i was at like a whole lot of checks where it was at air force one high which might have been his best ever design even better than anything he does out of his own brand maybe except for the slippers where he did this jordan no i think so it's air force one high again where the model doesn't really get enough praise and then he put all these different swooshes in different materials on them so i think it had like five or four on the outside it looked absolutely brilliant one of my favorite air forces i've seen in a long 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 time but i feel like a lot of them were lazy for a lot of them just like you know just basically cut swooshes off and made it out of different materials painted them um you know painted the uppers in some different colors maybe whatever it may be but it wasn't really that interesting wasn't that innovative wasn't that creative was a bit boring then when these people come across who are basically taking established shoes like a dunk or like a jordan that are already you know in trend and popular wherever it may be and then putting their own logo on them i thought this was the height of laziness because if anything this went against everything that i've kind of been aware of when it came to making reps or copies of already popping brands and sneakers it was always an option to be sort of things because for the most part the resources to make your own shoe from the ground up didn't really exist you didn't have the ability to do so and it was quite hard to do so anyway where would you even start so the good way to kind of get your foot in the industry and to kind of maybe make a bit of noise was maybe to copy something that already existed, hoping that maybe you could use the last or the expertise of certain factories, maybe you've done some other fakes and stuff to basically pick up the back of it and to kind of get your name out there in the hopes that once it pops off and you get your cease and desist, you can then use whatever money you've made to then make your own thing from the ground up. That was kind of, it's kind of always like a temporary solution um, for you to present your idea in footwear without having to fork out loads of money. That was what I always assumed it was. But it was also a good way to showcase your creativity like a babester. I think of a babester and I think of the common adage or the common thinking behind it is that, oh, they had, I remember back in the day in a forum, somebody actually posted it where they had like the filing of all the design element changes that um, babester put together. I think it was over a hundred little tweaks here and there all over the shoe so that effectively Nike couldn't sue them for copying the Air Force One. But I think the story actually, which is closer to the truth, is that whatever trademark or whatever flipping um, pattern existed over the Air Force One shape had kind of run out by the time the babes that came out. So they were effectively able to put the shoe out with no and little hassle. But somewhere along the line, there's some truth in both of those sort of statements. But still, you think of the babes, and what do you think of immediately? You think of bright, crazy colorways. So essentially, looking at it from just a creative or design proposal type of idea, Nigo wanted an ability to present his ideas on an Air Force One type shoe. He was not going to get a Nike collab anytime soon, especially back then. Collab was just harder to get than they are maybe nowadays, or maybe his relationship with Nike wasn't where it was, or maybe 22 or anything. Regardless, he liked, loved that silhouette, and he always imagined, hey, what if we had it in like a purple and blue, in this and that, in patent in and leather, in this leather, all these type of things were flowing in his head, and he put out colorways that you probably have never seen in a regular Air Force One. For the most part, most of the base the colorways are incredibly original, incredibly fresh, and very distinctive. So even if you do see the shape and you recognize it as being a quote unquote Air Force One shape, the colorway will still let you know that it's something completely different. Whereas what these guys are doing, from the Kool Kai to the Omi, they're just taking already established colorways from Jordan brands such as the Black Toes, Chicago's, um, the Black and Greys. That they're taking all these colorways that already exist and that have a lot of history and a lot of flipping love behind them with people and sneakers and whatnot and just kind of making them with their own logo on it that's all they're doing essentially that's it and i feel like for me that's the height of you know lacking in creativity and any kind of you know design chops and whatnot and if anything it kind of doesn't really say anything to your level of taste and your ability to make cool things because you've just taken an already existing shoe and added your logo onto it what we want to see 
is do you have an ability to create something from the ground that represents what you're about and that can appeal to a certain demographic obviously you cannot so this is what they do so i don't really have any sympathy or empathy for any of these people in this situation especially if you've got that warning in the beginning i feel like even if you do just want to make these copies use it as a springboard to kind of get your name out there and pop off and put some money in your pocket but surely there has to have been an end goal in mind you should have had an idea of how this ends and sort of kind of work towards it knowing full well if nike decided to come around and put a lawsuit on your ass you're basically done but for the most part these guys thought this is gonna last forever they thought they were just gonna sit back wait for nike to put out a new color of a shoe see everybody missed out on it and then put it out in their own logo and help people buy it that's absolutely incredibly um silly and stupid for me in my eyes and i feel like an incredible waste of time all things considered but obviously goes to show that all sneaker customizers are complete trash they are they're just a waste of time they don't really know what they're doing and eventually um shit ends up catching up with them so i'm eager to see how this kind of works out in the end i feel like the copies are absolutely trash and didn't do anything i didn't get interested into the flipping argument i feel like if you're a kid out there and you spend 200 dollars buying these fucking thunderbolt j1s you deserve every scam that comes your way unfortunately i don't make the rules it just is what it is and hopefully going forward things change with these people but you know most likely it will not most likely it will not